Hello, friends. Robert Pevin here, author of the Caverns and Creature series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today is another Marshall Monday. Today we're going down another path. This time we're going down the barbarian's path of the beast. A better path than we have gone down yet. This is an exciting, well, exciting-ish one. This is a pretty nifty guy. So it's this is... Exciting compared to the, the previous ones. Yeah, Battle Rager is sure technically a barbarian subclass. This gives you like wolverine powers this is the barbarians walk this is the line that i like barbarians who walk the path of beast draw their rage from a bestial spark burning within their souls so you know you can be like an alligator man or something whatever your heart desires if you want to rip people apart like a, a giant gorilla or chomp people's heads off like a, a massive snake this is the path to do it and it actually kind of lands the fantasy i think i think this i would put i would push a lot of new players to take this option over a lot of the other barbarian subclasses just because like you get to kind of live the fantasy in a meaningful fashion and it all starts with its third level feature, which is Form of the Beast. So this is starting at third level. When you choose, and when you enter your rage, you can transform, revealing the bestial power within. Animorphs. Until the rage ends, you manifest a natural weapon. It counts as a simple melee weapon for you, and you can add your strength modifier to the attack and damage rolls when you attack with it as normal. You choose the weapon's form each time you rage. So you get some flexibility. Whenever you enter a rage, you can take oh. one of these three, any oh, that you nice. like. Yeah, so you get bite, uh, your mouth transforms into a bestial muzzle or giant mandibles, your choice of telling you alligator or giant insect or, you know, whatever you're feeling on the day. It deals D8 piercing damage on hit. Once on each of your turns, when you damage a creature with this bite, you regain HP equal to your proficiency bonus, as long as you have less than half your max HP. So you get a little draining thing. Neat. I think that's probably the worst of them, but it's still neat. I like it. You get claws, so each of your hands transforms into a claw, which you can use as a weapon if it's empty. And if they aren't crab claws, you're not my real friend, because that's obviously that's the only option you should ever be taking. It deals a d6 slashing damage on hit once each once on each of your turns when you, you attack with the claw using an action, you make an additional claw attack as part of that same action. So this is extra attack. That's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. We also have tail, so you grow a lashing spiny tail, which deals a D8 piercing damage on hit and has the reach property. If a creature you can see within 10 feet of you hits you with an attack roll, you can use your reaction to swipe your tail and roll a D8, applying a bonus to your AC equal to the number rolled, potentially causing the attack to miss you. What do you think? All right, um, you say bite is the weakest, but that's, that's as far as I can tell, that's the only one that scales, right? Oh, uh, yeah. So claw scales in a way that your strength modifier and rage modifier scale, right? As you get a plus five strength and a higher rage mod, that number does technically go up. Um, bite goes up by proficiency bonus, which is, I would say, about the same. Yeah. Um, I do wish Tails, like, D8 grew as the game did, but it's still a free reaction every round if you want to play defensively. Now, this the tail, it doesn't, like, knock people over or anything, huh? Nope. Oh, well, they probably that, could, but... yeah. Ah, they're still they're pretty cool. Um, now the claws, d6 slashing damage. That's in lieu of a weapon. Yeah, but you get you... an extra attack, so it's kind of like a two d6 weapon. Kind yeah. of. Once you get extra attack, it's kind of like three attacks, and then you're obviously getting like two great sword swings, which would be four d6. This is three d6, but you get an extra stacking of the mods. But you can't use great weapon master. So like, if we look at optimized builds, this isn't it. But if we're looking at casual tables, this is pretty solid. Getting three instances of the stacking modifiers worth a lot more than the extra D6s for the Greatsword. All right, cool. Uh, I, I noticed you, uh, we just skipped over the origins. Oh, those are like optional little flavor things. Yeah, so there yeah, are a couple pretty sub cool. They are pretty cool. They're actually, unironically, my favorite part of most of these subclasses are like, so Shadow Touch gets one where you get like weird little gimmicks to your character. These are more flavor than anything else, and oh, I yeah. don't. I often will ascribe my own flavor to all my characters, agnostic of what subclasses there are. Like, I I have a very specific vision whenever I want my character to do and work the way they are. But if you want inspiration, you could take one of these four origins. And four is small, and you could roll a d4 if you want to do random. That's always fun, too. But one of your parents might be a lycanthrope. You could be descended from an arachnid or an arshruid. It actually says arshruid, but I definitely read it as arachnid. <laughs> Uh, a face spear might have given you the ability to adopt bestial <laughs> aspects or an ancient animal spirit dwells within you and you walk the path. The last one's pretty close to uh, Totem Warrior, which we haven't gotten to yet, which we will, which is also a really good auction. Um, but, you know, uh, any of... Sam, I, Sam, I want to make a confession. What? What's your confession, Bob? I also read Arachnid at first. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I just assume we're talking about animals, so bugs, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah incredible. But yeah, those all add, I think, and again, for a new player. 
I like that all of those add a little bit more of like, oh, this is your own character. You can kind of pick and choose some elements of your backstory. They can manifest in your character's abilities and how your character like mechanically functions. I think that's all really neat. I love the form of the beast asks you every single time you rage a somewhat interesting question. And it gives you a little bit different of a play pattern. You yeah, have... I love that you don't have, you're not locked into something. You know, if, mm -hmm. you, if you make a choice at first level and then you regret it at eighth level. No, you get to keep, there's the flexibility. That's nice. Yes. I also, so this is the kind of thing where you can also, right, you can play as a great sword wielding barbarian and use tail, and that's still an entirely valid strategy where you're just using your tail as an AC bump, right? And you can just you have a decent AC bump attack with a great sword a bunch of times, but if you get unarmed, if you get injured, switch over to bite next rage, and I start chomping down on things where you're getting some hit points if you're particularly injured. That's a cute little basic play pattern that gives you different incentives to do different things. And, like, claw definitely is the one that you want to be doing, like, all in on the claw thing. You want to be, like, ravaging people to, like, slash go away. The other modes aren't so bad damage-wise that even if you do want to switch to them, you're not foregoing that much because they're all basically long swords. And basically, long swords is a fine floor to start up. We're talking about barbarians, so I like this feature a lot. It's not inherently super powerful, but it is interesting decisions you get to make every single time you rage. And sure, it doesn't address the base problem barbarians have, which is what do you do out of combat. It definitely gives you some cool little extra tools and toys to play around with. All right, where do we go from there? Bestial Soul. So sixth level, the feral power within you increases, causing the natural weapons of your form of the beast to count as magical for overcoming resistance and immunity to non-magical attacks and damage. Never again will you need magic weapon. You can also alter your form to help adapt to your surroundings. When you finish a short or long rest, choose one of the following benefits, which you get until your next short or long rest. You get a swim speed equal to your walking speed and can breathe underwater. You can get a climbing speed equal to your walking speed and can climb difficult surfaces, including upside down on ceilings without needing to make an ability check. That's when the you... arachnid. That's the arachnid we've been talking so much about. <laughs> when you jump, you can make an athlete. A strength athletics check to extend your jump by a number of feet equal to the check's total. You can make this special check only once per turn. That's mode three. Super jump, basically. Remember what I just said? Well, this doesn't give you anything to do out of combat. Beast Jewel Soul does. It gives you a meaningful improvement to a boring feature to make your combat. Like, all right, don't have to worry about magic resistance anymore. Or not magic resistance anymore. You also, when you need to go into the underwater adventures, get a swim speed and a breath Whenever you want to climb around the insides of a dungeon, you get the climbing speed, which is going to be 90% of the time, I think, whenever you're playing this option. And the final one, whenever you start jumping around, you can use this, make a strength athletic check to get a little bit of extra feet. What's also Wait, neat explain, is that... Extend that... the jump to me. I... Okay. Extend your jump by a number of feet equal to the check's total. What does that mean? So whenever you when you jump, you can't make a strength athletic check to extend your jump. Whatever you roll on that check is the number of extra feet you move. And notably, I... I could be wrong. I would rule this because of how dumb jump rules are. That doesn't cost you movement. That's just a bonus distance added to the jump that you do move without expending your speed. Because normal jumps expend your speed to go distances. This just tacks on extra distance. And that's how I would rule it. The rules as written might be different. I haven't Googled it. But I would say it's a nifty little tool that if you can jump beyond your regular means, it's going to make you leap all over the place like a crazy monkey. It's going to be super fun. And if it doesn't work like that, it's almost unusable. So you know. All right, so, all right, uh, I got to jump. Yep. I make a, an athletics check. I roll a 17. Seven I jump. extra feet. All right. 17 is the number on the die or the modified number? The modified, 17 is the number that you roll on the die. So let's say, yeah. okay. Let's just go through a whole jump because it has yeah, its own stupid that. rules, okay? So you're making a long jump, and we're going to have to start that long jump by having a 10-foot run. So you're, we also have to know your speed. So you're a barbarian. We'll say you're level 6. You have to be. So you've got fast moving. Which you, let's say you have a speed of 40, right? Nice, right. easy, 40, okay? When you make a long jump, you cover a number of feet equal to your strength score if you move at least 10 feet immediately before the jump. When you make a standing long jump, you cover half that distance. So we're making the running long jump. You move 10 feet. You jump your strength score. Let's say your strength score is 20. You're jumping 20 feet. Now you roll the athletic. You roll the strength. Is it athletics? Is it just strength? Athletics, yes. You roll the strength athletics check, which you have if you're raging advantage on, which is pretty cool. But we just roll a regular strength athletics check. We already are jumping the 20 distance because that's equal to our strength score now yeah. whatever we roll in the strength test, let's say we roll an eight we add eight feet to the distance we're jumping if we roll it if, if if we roll a three we're adding our strength score so our total is eight we add that to our okay distance. that was my question now all right so we've the jumped, jump rules of this game are dumb we have moved 10 feet jump 20 feet that cost movement yep plus eight feet that does, does that it? might cost movement. <laughs> yeah. 
But I mean, no, it has to be because if you roll a twenty on that check and you you get five, that's twenty five extra feet. That's well behind your movement. Yeah, and that seems sweet. That seems like yeah, awesome. Like, I want to do how that because yeah. Uh, yeah. If not, then this isn't really going to do anything. It does say it extends your jump by number of feet to the checks total. It, commenters, let me know if that's rules is right or not. I would definitely play it that way at my tables, and I would recommend doing the same because that's way sweeter, and barbarians could use the bone. Um, although, this climb speed definitely also helps. Like, this is a real level 6 feature that gives you a meaningful combat improvement that you are looking for, and it gives you three cool modes of outer combat exploration. I love the idea of the bestial barbarian just having a passive spider climb. That's sweet. Yeah, yeah when you are reading it, I was a little bit scared. The, your feral powers increases, causing the natural weapons. Uh, to count as magical. Uh, that's normally where it stops resistance. if we're looking at PhD I thought that's content. where it was going to stop, yeah. yeah. But no, uh, yeah, the rest of this text is <laughs> the only text, really. Yeah, um, and it's sweet. Yeah, it is. Uh, Infectious Furies, we've got a 10th level. So at 10th level, whenever you hit a creature with a, your natural weapons while raging, so this is an incentive to use your bites and claws and stuff, the beast within you can curse your target with rabid fury. The target makes a whiz saving throw a DC of 8 plus your con plus your proficiency bonus, or suffer one of the following effects your choice. It must use its reaction to make a melee attack against another creature of your choice that you can see, which is ooh, delicious. Love that. Or it takes 2d12 bonus psychic damage, which is sure. That's fine. Bonus damage is always good. Uh, you could use this feature a number of times to your proficiency bonus, and you get all of them back when you finish a long rest. So this feature is okay. kind of cool. It's kind of underwhelming, honestly. I You definitely want to get, like, the... I bite the giant and it smashes its friend. That's where you want to be with this the bonus 2d12 psychic damage is like i don't love 6 to 8 12 psychic damage for a full feature it's a decent chunk of damage but like most of the time i want to see something take a, a a massive club and just cracks one of its buddies over the head with it that's where i want to be with this and that can happen pretty regularly here yeah i mean not only does it do that but for what it's worth it also uses up the reaction yeah it gives you kind of a free disengage which is yeah. you know that's not nothing uh, it's fine. I don't think this is the best feature here, but again, for like a new player, it's nice that you get this just little extra pull of resources that gives you a few extra little things to do. You can be like, oh, I want that thing to hit its buddy right now, and you can do that. Or maybe you don't want to think about that. You just say, like, I'm just gonna, always gonna just spend it for two to twelve extra damage willy nilly, just like a free smite kind of deal. And that's also not the end of the world. It's entirely reasonable. We end things with Call the Hunt. So at 14th level, the beast within you grows so powerful that you can spread its ferocity to others and gain resilience from them joining your hunt. When you enter a rage, you can choose a number of other willing creatures you can see within 30 feet of you equal to your constitution modifier. So normally three to five. You gain yeah. five temporary hit points for each creature that accepts this feature. So you can sometimes just get a free 25 HP. This is a really big incentive to max your con score. Until the rage ends, the chosen creatures can use the following benefit once on each of their turns. This benefit is when the creature hits a target with an attack roll and deals damage to it the creature can roll a d6 and gain bonus the damage equal to the number rolled. And it's just any attack roll. It can be a spell attack roll. It can be a weapon attack roll. Either are fine. It can be melee. It can be ranged. Any attack roll, bonus d6 damage. Once each of its turns. So you can't multi-attack with it. Uh, you can no use downside to this, huh? None whatsoever. Uh, okay. You can use this feature a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus and get all back when you finish a long rest. So you get every time you rage functionally, you'll call the hunt. Right, yeah, uh, there's a weird caveat in there that says, uh, chosen creature, no, where was it? Uh, ah, for each creature that accepts this feature, it would seem like... Because they have to be willing. Why, why, yeah, but why wouldn't they? I. They don't want you to get extra HP? <laughs> I know, they yeah. just want to be a dick. Yeah, sure. This is a, so I like this feature a lot in the scope that, like, you will feel like it's a little bit of a capstone feature. It feels like it's a, you're both tankier, but you're also giving your allies bonuses. Um, it does say other, which really bums me out. I really don't understand why I can't get my free bonus D6 on hit. Like, that seems like it should be a given. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is going back to the, uh, which one, the ancestors that, that hate you? Yeah. The the beasts love everyone else but you. They right. want you to take more damage and them to deal more damage. And like, honestly, at this tier, a bonus D6 on hit once per turn. Like, it's like 3 to 46 extra damage at best per round. And that's not amazing. At the same time, it's still like a fine little passive improvement. It, this is also a level 14 feature, which is 
a tier of play that we're starting to leave. This is sort of where the game is starting to end for a lot of tables or has already ended for a lot of tables. So I tend to weigh these slightly less. Um, it is definitely, I think, one of the weaker options here. It's definitely less exciting than a lot of the other ones. But hey, a big chunk of hit points uh, isn't the end one, of the world. One thing worth noting, though, it is uh, you use it a number of times equal to your proficiency bonus. It's not just once per long rest like a lot of these are. That's true. It'll be, That normally equates to every fight you have is yeah. what that normally equates to. Because you just every time you enter a rage, great. Call the hunt. Why not? I've got six of these. I'm level 14. I've got at least three, four, five of them. So I have mine as well. They're not going to be that many encounters with our next long rest. I'll just call the hunt. Or if the encounter is like, you know, fighting an ooze in a dungeon, you'll be like, okay, we pro I probably don't need the temp HP to kill that singular entity that we're getting an initiative for. So whatever. This I just still... thought that was worth mentioning. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, for sure. I think this still has the core barbarian problem where... If you're not raging, you're not a character. Beast Soul helps a lot. The climb speed is going to be 95% of how you're navigating in an interesting fashion compared to other characters. And I think it's a huge, meaningful improvement that barbarians desperately want. They want features like Beast Soul. At the same time, I do really wish, like, Infectious Fury wasn't dependent on your raging. It's You're going to be raging most of the time anyway, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, and I also really would have loved to see, Infectious like, Fury. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I, it, think... I mean, it, and it requires you to be using the natural weapons that you get while you're well raging. raging. That's true. Yeah. I I think this this subclass would have benefited a little bit more from just like one or two more out of combat features. I think barbarians really lacking on them, especially in the top end stuff. And again, call the hunt is kind of weak. Beyond that, this is by far my favorite barbarian option. Again, if you're a new player and want a simple class, a simple play pattern, this is leagues better, leagues better than the PHP options. Yes, the the infinite HP that you feel like you get from Totem Bear is good. It isn't that interesting. You're just going to be like, oh, I just hit the toggle and attack every single turn, and I just take a bunch of damage, and I don't really have any interesting decisions to make. This gives you an interesting decision every single time you rage. This gives you an interesting decision every single time you short rest. And it's not like a complicated one. It's not like you're going to have to make that decision every single turn. It's not like you're going to have to, you know, manage a giant pool of resources or anything. It's just like, you get one thing to decide on. And that's a lot more meaningful to me than I made my decision. All I'm going to do is have this passive benefit that makes me feel like I take a billion damage. I don't I don't love that for players that want dynamic, that want interesting decisions to make and want to learn this game and its fun little complexities and all the decision making that goes into it. So I'll get a lot. Well, it's uh it's definitely my favorite of the ones we've talked about so far. That's not a high bar. No. <laughs> Uh, I think this is probably a solid B. I really do think Call the Hunt lets it down a little bit, and I don't think it, it's still a barbarian subclass at the end of the day, but Beastial Soul helps a lot. And it's not going to like break any tables in half. It's going to be weak, and like you're never going to see this option at like the super power gamey 20th level character builds. This will be nowhere near any of that. Unless, for some reason, the tail 8 C-bomb for reaction is worth more than like a lot of other very good reactions. It probably isn't. Uh, so yeah, you're probably not going to see this at like superpower gaming stuff. That's not the majority of tables. At a casual table, this is an entirely great, really solid, really flavorfully fitting. Like, it heals all the flavor marks. I love that for it. It's great. Yeah, I feel like if I was comparing this to any other class, uh, subclass, then uh, I'd give it something lower. But yeah, for Barbarian, I'll give it a B. It's, uh... Why would you give it lower? I mean, like for, you know, something compared like, uh, you know, a lot of the sorcerer subclasses or, um, you know, like any other class subclasses where you do like insanely powerful things. Like... I would say this is probably pretty close to some of the better paladin subclasses, to be honest with you. I think a lot of the paladin subclasses give you like one or two long rest features. They get the, what really the juices of them tends to be their like their sub their spells. Um, but as a class without spell casting, I would say these features are well, on they, some all, of the best ones. Also, you know, the the classes with spell casting have spell casting. Yeah, but just not the subclasses' fault, but it's the classes' fault. As far as like subclass features go, I definitely think this list oh, is it's, very. It's solid. really cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah, B B sounds good. You're still, you're still a barbarian. There's still all the issues with that, but uh, very flavorful. Yeah. All right, that was the uh, path of the beast. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Let us know what you think down in the comments, and we will see you next time. Bye bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it, a gentle tap will suffice. 
If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.